Hey everyone, it's been a while since my last blog video, so I thought I'd do a little bit of an update, uh, as I said I would when I had the shifter installed. So I've uh, done that now, and I thought I'd show you guys what I've gone for in the end. So this is a um, universal shifter from Track Racer. Now, the, the one I was supposed to get, I'll uh, bring up an image of what it's supposed to have looked like. And it was originally on their website for £26. It's supposed to clip on top of the profile here and be sort of like a small square area, but I think they've since discontinued that. So they have sent me their newer, more expensive uh, universal shift design, uh, which is a bit bigger. It's, I think it has more cutouts for uh, a larger range of shifters, and I could possibly attach uh, a handbrake or something else on the side here. So it's basically a, a sort of U-shaped bracket. And if I um, just get the other part, which I've not installed, it comes with this other plate piece here. And if you can see underneath uh, where it clips to the profile, this would go in here to attach the other side of the profile to make a sort of strong square. But uh, I actually found I don't need it, <laughs> so I've not bothered installing that piece. I could probably use that as a additional bit of bracket somewhere on my rig. Um, but around the other side, you see I've got it attached with some M8 washers, and that's um, really sturdy. The other thing is, because it is um, a bit wide and doesn't sit in the middle of the rails, I've not attached it directly to the upright. Actually attached it to the side, so you can see here. I've gone for some uh, angle brackets, corner brackets on the top and bottom, and that seems pretty sturdy. There's there's not much flex in that, um, if any. I mean, ideally, one one thing with the um, this particular this rig is that people mention. It could do with a additional upright, which if I had some spare profiler would. Uh, but uh, it seems strong enough, so happy with that. So now using the, uh, the Logitech shifter, I can uh, use it for rallying. Uh, it's actually quite a good price. I had a look on Amazon, and it's still, I think, it's forty-seven pounds. Uh, oh, no, no, thirty-seven pounds, uh, which is one of the cheapest shifters available. Uh, but I obviously had this left over from when I bought the G29, so it didn't cost me anything. And then the wiring, well, because I pulled it out, it's all a bit come undone. But you can see it's connected to the uh, Leo Bodner uh, gear, sh gear shifter adapter, which I mentioned in the previous video. Uh, so yeah, that was the gear shifter. The other thing uh, I installed was the very essential cup holder there, so that's on. And in my last video I said I'd uh, talk more about the, uh, the CSL DD and the uh, the steering wheel. So, yeah, let's talk about this. Now, so a lot of people have asked me, have I, uh, has it made me faster driving? Um, and the short answer is marginally. Um, what you find is uh, there's quite a bit of getting used to the, the force feedback of this once uh, coming from a geared wheel like the Logitech G29 to something um, such as a direct drive such as this. The feedback is almost instant and there's no sort of, I guess you call it, uh, slack uh, between the notches on the G29 from sideways left to right as it connects with the cogs, it's, it's instant feedback. So the response time is definitely quicker with this. Also the amount of detail that you pick up. And what I'm finding is I'm now able to react more to force feedback cues in the game rather than visual cues where I'd see the car slide and then the wheel would give me feedback on the G29 on this because it's uh, virtually instant. I can actually feel a car slide before I see it. So yeah, I guess 
marginal improvements in time, uh, just as I'm getting used to it. Uh, definitely better consistency, which um, leads to faster lap times overall because I'm not coming off as much. Um, I did find when I first got it though, because I could feel so much of the car and the feedback through the wheel, I'd push the car a lot more than I probably would do otherwise, and I tended to overdrive the car. Okay, because this video covers the CSLDD, I thought I'd talk a bit about the wheel clamp, which I used for a couple of weeks before I built the rig. Um, just to give you my thoughts on it and some uh, maybe some pointers if you're planning to clamp this to a desk. So this is the uh, instructions on the top here. I'll just open it up and show you what you get in the box. So, got an adjustment handle. Uh, this is one of the T-nuts, the M6 T-nuts that comes with the CSLDD. So there'll be four of these in the box. Um, but it'll make sense when I bring out the part. So that's the base. This is the top part. And this is part of the uh, screw, screw bit. Uh, so what happens is these three parts here act as rails for the CSLDD to slide onto and then this end uh, along with this part screws through the base. I'll put it together quickly now and clamp it to the desk to show what it looks like. Uh, so that's what it looks like basically loosely put together. I would say it is quite um, I guess flimsy in, in the sense that it doesn't hold together very well which is one thing I didn't like um, compared to using the Logitech G29 clamping on and off was, was quite easy. This it's, it's a bit fiddly just because this bit at the bottom uh, comes apart but if, if you had this permanently clamped to a desk obviously that wouldn't be an issue and um, the other thing to note is that because the length of the um, the base to the wheel is a lot longer than say something like a G29 then it is going to stick quite out far into the room and you'll have to um, account for where your pedals may be um, it did cause me a little bit of a problem with my pedal being further back I had to find a way to stop them uh, sliding so something else to keep in mind um, so anyway I'll attach it to, to the desk so just to show you what it's like clamped onto a desk you can see underneath there's some uh, rubber grippers on the bottom here and there's an additional uh, handle that you can attach to the bottom to help torque it up and grip it on now your mileage may vary as to how sturdy it is depending on the um, material of your desk. I did find with the 8 Newton meter power pack and the force feedback set to 70%, uh, which is I guess just over 5 Newton meters, um, there was some horizontal slippage. Um, as you can see, the, these rubber grippers are okay, but I'd say this design is probably the bare minimum of what's required for this and also what, was, what I wasn't a fan of was how the um, the base sits on this clamp a lot of the weight I guess goes through the edge here where with the Logitech G29 a lot of the weight is, the weight is at the back so to sum up my thoughts on the CSL DD table clamp I'd say it's just about passable as a usable solution uh, I kind of wish Fnatic had made it a bit more robust, uh, like the previous Club Sport version. It gets the job done. It's okay if you're not having to clamp it on and off. Um, if you are, then the G29 and the way that clamps, I think, was much better than this. And I guess it was one of the reasons I um, eventually got a rig. Uh, it's not the only reason, but um, if you're looking to clamp a CSL DD to a desk, I'd say it's okay if you plan to keep it clamped on. Clamping on and off isn't ideal, but um, like I say, it's the bare minimum and it gets the job done, but it's not great. Okay, in terms of how the wheelbase is attached to the wheel deck, I can't remember if I explained it in the previous video, but there's actually um, three bolts that I've used. So it comes with these T-nuts. 
and you can actually side mount the um, the wheel the wheelbase to uh, this particular frame. So I believe Simlabs do a CSLDD uh, specific bracket, which I think is about eighty pounds, and that allows you to uh, side mount this. But I don't I think it's actually needed. There's a there's more than enough strength with just the the three bolts. I mean, I don't know if you can see up there. If I try and shift this, it just does like no flex in that uh, wheel deck there. If anything, the whole rig sort of moves because of the, the caster wheels that I've mentioned in the, the last video. Um, around the back of the device, if you've not seen this before, uh, if it focuses. Uh, we've got the, the, the USB connector here, the power pack. Uh, I've got the 8 new meter version, the higher power power pack. Uh, shifter 1 and 2, so you can have like a 6-speed shifter, obviously for uh, Fnatic versions. And then a sequential one as well, I guess. And you can see we've got a uh, cable in there if it focuses for the pedals. And then there's one for the handbrake on the far right. There's a data port here. I'm not too sure what that's for. Maybe for um, maybe there'll be future products down the line, or maybe it's so you can reprogram it. Should you have a firmware issue, I'm not entirely sure. But, uh, yeah, that's the CSLDD. Been very impressed with that to date. The thing I'll talk about is the McLaren GT3 wheel. Uh, so I don't think I mentioned much about it in the last video. Um, it's got this uh, carbon carbon fibre effect finish on it, which I think looks pretty good. Rubber grips, very lightweight. I think it's one of the lightest rims. This and the WRC rally wheel, which I'll talk about later. Every button on here is mappable, apart from this middle one here, which is for changing modes. So I tend to have this set to my uh, traction control adjust and this one, ABS, this you know, well, brake bias adjust, and this one's basically spare at the moment. Down here is usually the Xbox button, but I use that as the VR recenter button, so I've just changed the, uh, the Xbox cap with the eyeball, and I've left the rest as is. These buttons are a bit stiffer than the rest, so typically that would be like the pit limiter, and uh, they're N for neutral or ignition maybe. You can map them however you want. I've actually um, often mapped the user's traction control as well just because they're right by the your thumbs. If I'm playing a set of course competition or if I'm playing a formula game, I tend to have that's the DRS button uh, just because it's like really easy to reach uh, when driving. In terms of the different modes, so I mentioned everything else you can map. This is a, um, I don't know how many, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight way funky switch, I guess it is. Might got that wrong. And we can rotate it up, down, left, right, and press it in. So it's quite useful. And in terms of modes, there's, I think there's four modes. Yeah, so A is the clutch bite point. So I might just show you a brief video uh, in between this this blog format uh, just to show you how that works but essentially what that does it helps you uh, launch formula cars or well any car you want really by assisting with the clutch uh, bite point okay so we've got auto and blister 2 loaded up i've got the clutch pedal down i'm in first gear now i've got the uh, the wheel set to a which is the clutch start mode in order to use that, you push both the paddles down and it'll give you a readout on the wheel of what percentage the clutch is set to. And all you need to do is uh, release one of the paddles to the desired uh, percent of clutch amount. So we'll go for, I don't know, 70, uh, or roughly about 70. And then I'm going to release the left paddle and now the clutch should be automatically biting at 70%. So if I let go of the clutch down here it should have 70% bite so I can rev this not move much 
All I need to do then is just let the right paddle and it will uh, launch us. So I'll just do that one more time so you can see. Both clutch paddles down and then I'll lower the right one to, we'll go a bit higher this time, 80%. Let go of the left so the clutch is now 80%. I can rev. As soon as I let go of the uh, paddle now, it should launch us straight from 8% clutch. Now we can at least control. But, uh, you get the idea. Yeah, so in terms of the software that comes with the um, Fanatec Direct Drive uh, wheelbase and also for all of the Fanatec products, um, I've got it loaded up on Windows now. And you can see there's a, we've got a bunch of different uh, devices already connected here. So it gives you a GUI showing you um, basically the input being picked up by, by Windows. We've got a bunch of settings in here, so I'm not going to dwell on this because there's probably other much better tutorial videos on here. But I just wanted to show you what it um, looks like and what settings there are. Uh, if you click on pedals, you can test the uh, input, make sure everything's working correctly. And shifter, I don't actually have a, a Fantec shifter. I've got my uh, G29 one set up here, so that's not going to show anything. Uh, on this screen, uh, so it's like the presets. So this is if you want to do like a uh, customized profiles. And the reason I brought this up is just to show you on the wheel how you can get to this. Cause I didn't realize this until recently, right next to the center dial button here, there's like a little tiny little button. So if you press that, it comes up with set one and set one refers to the GUI to the right here. And with the little uh, funky switch, you can rotate through different sets. So set one, set two, uh, set three all, all the way to set four. And also if you press, if you not press, if you push sideways, you can quickly get to the, like the force feedback amount. So I've got this set to a hundred, but you can dial this down and you can see the settings on the profile to my right change as well. So that's a real quick and easy way. If you want in mid game, if you want to change the force feedback, now I, I tend to have this set to a hundred in the um, application and I turn it down in the game. And the reason for that is I don't want to have any clipping. So what could potentially happen is you might have it, you find it's a bit too high, the force feedback. So you, know, you bring it down to about 50, 50 or 60%. And you think that's, um, that's perfect for the game. Then you switch to another game and you're on 80% force feedback. It's enough. You turn it all the way up to a hundred and all you're ever going to get is 60. So you're actually getting clipping there. So personally, what I tend to do is have this set much higher on, on the wheel uh, and then turn it down in the game. It's a, it's a little tip there on how to get into the settings. Then you can map the paddles to clutch and handbrake. That's clutch only. Clutch and handbrake, brake and throttle. Should you want to uh, not use pedals, you can potentially drive the car just using the paddles and then map analog, analog is mappable analog. You can just map this to anything you want. So if we look around the back, uh, these are independent uh, paddles and the gear shifter is on a rocker in the middle. And I believe these have got magnetic uh, contacts here. So it's a nice click. So it definitely, feels good when you're changing actually and you can actually push forward if you wanted to as well as pull back or pull back on that side and goes up because it's on the, the rock in the middle and this is the quick release uh, light connector fits on really tight I've not noticed any slack on that or any wobble so yeah very very happy with this it is the my GT and formula style wheel and it works particularly well for um, VR racing there's enough spacing for you to remember where things are. The only tricky uh, dials I'd say are the middle ones in VR. It takes me a while to sort of find where those are, but the rest I can pretty much figure out uh, quite easy. Um, but the only thing I'm really missing now is, now I've got the gear shifter installed, is uh, a round wheel. So I've ordered myself the BMW GT2 V2 rim, so that should be arriving 
in December time so watch out for a future video on that I'll probably be a blog format style video rather than a, a detailed review one so yeah I think that rounds up everything I want to cover off in this video uh, if you got any questions pop in the comments below and I'll try and answer them and yep yeah, that's it okay until next time bye for now